Today's video is sponsored by EV, Australia's very own Tesla and electric vehicle sharing platform. Hey everyone, you're with Tesla Tom and thanks so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel where I discuss Tesla, electric vehicles and renewable energy. If this is your first time to my channel then hello and welcome. Take a moment to hit that red subscribe button that way you stay informed of any new content and it also helps my channel to grow as well. Today we're going to look at software update 2021.4.12 in my 2015 Tesla Model S with AP1 hardware. We're going to do that and much more right after this. Welcome back guys, and uh, like I said, we got software update 2021.4.12 in my Tesla Model S. And let's have a look at what it says in the release notes. Minor cold weather improvements and bug fixes. Additional enhancements have been made to improve the overall experience of your Tesla vehicle in cold weather. Now, we certainly don't get that cold weather here in Sydney, Australia, and certainly not that cold this time of year. It's March, which means we're just coming into autumn. We've got a bit of a rainy spell at the moment, but even then it's not that cold. So today's temp is sitting around 20 to 22 degrees Celsius. So I really can't test how much more efficient the car is with the cold weather update. However, I'm sure if you're living in a cold climate, uh, this is certainly gonna be of some benefit to you, I imagine, uh, for the efficiency of the battery, uh, which is probably the most important thing. However, today we have got something exciting for you. Uh, we are actually going to the Tesla service center in Alexandria. Uh, I've got a couple of things I need to fix up. Uh, there were a couple of bugs that I needed to be ironed out with my MCU2 upgrade. Uh, for example, the um, seat heaters aren't working. And also the rear view mirror needs to be fixed as well uh, because it's not adjusting to the differing light conditions. But the most exciting thing I want to share with you today is that I'm actually going to be adding a highway autopilot to this car. Now, of course, this is an AP1 car, so I don't actually get uh, the full self-driving uh, features like we do with the hardware 3 cars, but I'm, all, I'm still excited to get the um, AP1 uh, upgrade. So I should be able to get auto steer, uh, traffic aware cruise control, uh, and also a lane change. And I think summon and parking assist also comes in as well. So looking forward to testing all those features for you uh, coming up after we visit the service center. You know, people ask me all the time, what is it actually like to really own a Tesla? I get questions like, how long does it take to charge? Can you take it on a road trip? And how fast does it really go? And that's when I tell them, well, why wonder when you can check it out for yourself? Because with EV, Australia's very own Tesla and electric vehicle sharing platform, you can actually test out and experience what it's like to drive a Tesla beyond a short test drive. With EV, you can rent a car for a few days to try before you buy, check it out for a weekend for a road trip, or even use it as a gift to surprise that special someone who's always talking about Tesla. You know exactly what I mean. So jump on ev.com.au forward slash Tesla Tom and use my code Tesla Tom at the checkout to get $30 off your very first rental. With a growing fleet of Tesla and electric vehicles, there's sure to be an EV car near you. And now for the rest of the video. Hey guys, I'm just returning home from uh, the day's service at Alexandria. And uh, so the service went well. Um, so the autopilot was installed, highway autopilot for the Model S. Um, there's a different process now uh, as to how it works. Uh, in the past, you could just sort of buy it from the, um, from the touch screen here, but uh, ever since full self-driving package came to Hardware 3, us AP1 owners uh, have had to go through a different system where you've had to actually go to the service center, get it installed, firmware updated, the payment has to be made first, that's the catch, uh, and then the US guys uh, flick a switch uh, and basically that's it. Uh, that's how you get highway autopilot. So hopefully tomorrow uh, I will be able to show you some of the highway autopilot features uh, at work, well on the way to work at least. And a big shout out to uh, the guys and girls at Tesla Alexandria who looked after me today. Uh, Kat, Ben and uh, Carl, thank you very much guys for looking after me uh, and installing what I needed and fix what I needed to be fixed uh, for this beautiful vintage Model S which I have. All right guys, I'll see you in the morning for the autopilot test for software update 4.12. Stay tuned. Well, good morning everyone. Uh, hope you're all doing well. And have I got a cracker of a day to show you highway autopilot in my Tesla Model S. 
I can confirm it's all working well. I had a test of it yesterday, uh, but I thought I'd show you today in the wet to show how good autopilot really is. And uh, of course, this is my Tesla Model S, so it's not full self-driving. Uh, it's just highway autopilot because I don't have the eight cameras around the car. I've just got the one camera and of course the uh, ultrasonic sensors around to help the car as well. So to engage autopilot in this car, I use this stalk here on the left side of the steering column. And to change the speed, I go up and down, flick up and down with the stalk. And you can also see how close you want to follow the car ahead by turning this dial here as well. So let's engage autopilot now. Flick twice towards you. There we go. And it's got traffic aware cruise control. It follows the speed limit as well. Thinks the bus is in my lane, so it's going a little bit slow, but I will just give it a bit more on the pedal just to pass it. You can see the ultrasonic sonic sensors working there in lieu of the cameras, which I don't have on the side repeaters. And I'm just going to bump up the speed limit a little bit to 80. Oh, auto steer stuck on 60. I think it's because it's reading something that happened the other day on this road too, but you can now pump it up to 80. I think it's reading probably the side roads here you can see on the map. Uh, on the single lane roads, it does restrict um, very strictly to the speed limit. But now that I'm on the multi-lane road, I can go at um, a bit higher, go at 80. Here we are. That is um, autopilot, highway autopilot on my Tesla Model S. I've got to say, it feels complete now. My Tesla Model S feels complete. It feels like a real Tesla, so to speak. Uh, I think that's the key ingredient that was missing in my car, just the autopilot. I don't know why I left it so long to get it after five years of ownership. It's pretty funny, but um, I'm glad I've got it now. And you can see it's working pretty well uh, in the rain. Uh, and uh, you know, I guess the poor visibility, as long as the lane markings are intact, which they are, it's working pretty well. And uh, I tell you what, lane change is actually pretty good. Uh, once I get to a straight bit, I'll show you what I mean. Like, it's uh, it's pretty decisive. Like, you know, there's no sort of eh, maybe yes, no, and sometimes on the Model Three. But watch this. If I just indicate left, it just goes. Like, honestly, it's fantastic. But the only thing is, I've got to switch the um, indicator off after it turns, after it changes lanes. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just go for a quick drive on this road, which is um, a pretty straight road. It's a nice underpass as well, uh, which we'll use up here in my area. And uh, it doesn't recognize red lights, but uh, it does It does stop when there's a car in front of it that uh, has stopped. So you know, obviously if you have an old Model S like mine, think you're getting highway autopilot, which if you already don't have it, then just be careful. It doesn't recognize red lights. It will stop if there's a car ahead of you, uh, but it won't actually stop for a red light. So be careful. So I'm just going to give it a test here in just sort of urban conditions with, um, with cars around me. Yeah, passes through the orange okay. And look, following the car ahead pretty, pretty well. Um, as I said, you can, you know, flick from one to six, I think it is. How, or seven rather, how close you want to follow the car ahead. I might just put it on number two. Let's try two. Just gonna see if I can change lanes to the right. Yep, as I said, pretty decisive. And you're probably wondering, without repeater cameras, how is it doing that? Well, yeah, the ultrasonic sensors, you can see the um, sort of the, the arcs around the car, picking up, you know, the cars around me and obstacles around me. Oh, I'm hugging pretty tight on the right, which I don't quite like, but I am keeping a, a, a firm handle on the wheel just in case. Yeah, it seems to have a similar issue with, uh, with the Model 3 as well. It, it does like the right side of the lane. Makes me a little nervous. Especially when there is uh, an obstacle, like the uh, concrete barriers to my right. Uh, but it seems to be going okay for now. One thing I have, or haven't noticed rather, is the lack of phantom braking. Yeah, I'm, you know, going at 70. It's pretty good. And I might just swing back to the left. Like I said before, you've got to um, turn off the indicator after a auto lane change. Otherwise it'll just keep going. Not like the Model 3 uh, or full self driving cars for that matter. Where uh, once you do the lane change, the auto lane change will take off the indicator for you. 
Let's see what happens when there's a converging road, two lanes merging together. Yeah, handled that pretty well. I do like the visualization on the S, it's quite nice. Okay. Oh, the car behind me wants to merge. So what I'll do is actually merge to the right. There we go, and I'm gonna take off autopilot now, just so I can use the right lane to turn right. All right, I'm gonna turn around here and then swing back and go the other way. See you soon. All right guys, just heading westbound again, back under the underpass. I'm just gonna wait till I um, diverge on this fork before I engage autopilot. There we go, flick the stalk forward twice. Engaged it pretty well, just gonna reduce it by one so exactly on the speed limit at 70. All right guys, well that is my video for today for software update 2021.4.12 for my Tesla Model S AP1 MCU2 with its new highway autopilot configuration, which I'm pretty happy with. Can't wait to keep testing it. Uh, some might argue that it's a pretty mature product, but I don't know, it's still on beta. So, um, you know, you would think even with highway autopilot, which is uh, not full self-driving, that there'd be some improvements with time, of course. Uh, hopefully Tesla is still supporting this car, which is now technically six years old, about five years for me for ownership because I bought it second hand. But yeah, six year old car is still going strong and it still improve its performance with a software update. It's pretty cool. Do a quick lane change here. All right guys, stay safe. And until the next video, happy charging.